I'm pleased today to be joined by Lolo's Chicken and Waffles founder and president, CEO, head chef, Larry White. How are you, Larry? Wonderful. How are you? Now, let's, let's address somebody who might not be familiar with your brand. Tell us a little bit about the business. Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. Great food, great atmosphere. Just a good time, man. What, what, what are some of your uh, main dishes? What, what are the things that are most, most popular right well, now? Well, of course, Chester's? we're famous for our chicken and waffles. Uh, we specialize in comfort food. So we have your collard greens, your baked macaroni and cheese, candy yams, fried catfish. Uh, we do steak and eggs. We do all kind of pancakes and French toast, banana pudding, peach cobblers, red velvet cakes. The list goes on. How many, how many locations now? We're at five. Five locations. Five locations now. Gilbert, Scottsdale, Phoenix. We have a licensing deal in the airport, Sky Harbor, Terminal 4, West, um, West Gate, like the pre-security. And we also have one in the Bank One Ballpark, or Chase Fields. That's how old school I am. I'm telling my age now. Bank, the Bob. The Bob, yeah. That's right. So how did you know you were an entrepreneur? I still don't know, am I? I think you are. I think it's official. I well, think after the fifth restaurant and your, and your licensing deal, you're well, official. I'm still working hard every day. Uh, we're working hard at our craft to perfect it and be better every day. I know there's other things that we can be better at. So I really don't see myself as the entrepreneur because I'm still going to work, pushing forward every day. Yeah. There's nothing in the stores that I would ask anybody or any of my staff to do that I wouldn't do myself. Now you grew up working in your grandmother's restaurant. Correct, I came from a busboy, dishwasher, server, cook, cashier. I wore every single hat that my grandma needed me to wear. When she needed me to wear, I put it on and I gave her 110%. And I think that's one of the reasons for my success today because I worked hard for her, gave her 110%. And you know, you gotta do great for somebody else before God bless you with your own. Can you pinpoint the time and place when you knew this is what you wanted to do? Oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys want that on camera. Um, but we do. I, you do. Um, I actually, sh I, I should give a shout out to Sheriff Joe R. Powell because he made me think about it. Um, I got in trouble in 1997 um, and I was sitting in a jail cell and I said there gotta be a better way of life. And that's when I came up with the plan for Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's the truth though. Yeah. It's the truth. And now Sheriff Joe's come here and eat. I bet he has. Yeah, he does. He, he comes probably like, you that, know, that every can, other month. That boy can eat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He loves the food. Um, it's not easy running a business. No, not at all. Now, Especially a restaurant. Now, I've known you, it's, it's almost 10 years. About 10 years. I, kn I knew you when this was... A little house? No, no. Was it a house? It was a little house. I thought it was a tire shop. It, no, it wasn't a tire shop. It was actually a little house. And your restaurant was over here. Right behind this building right here at 1220 South Central. And we have a mutual friend who Russ. said, you've got to come check this out. And there was a line down That's the right. street. That's right. And I met him working at the Cheesecake Factory before I even opened my store. So I bumped into him at a Cheesecake Factory or maybe we were already open. And I think I was trying to steal him because I needed some waiters. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, hey, come work for me. And he came over and was like, well, you're not busy enough for me to work here, but I'll still come here and eat every day because the food is damn good. <laughs> that worked. Yeah. So, so how did you go from the idea, your nickname as a kid was Lolo. Lolo. The, the idea to the point where you have celebrities come into this first location. You have a line down the street. You know, hard are you, work, able to, are you able to describe that? How did that I, I happen? I am. I am. I, I tell the story all the time. Um, first of all, hard work pays off. Um, keeping God is my foundation. Um, you know, he just led me the way. Uh, I'm working on a high school education, no college, no culinary background. My grandmother and father taught me everything that I know about cooking. And I'm just going off of common sense. And I believe in doing good to others, good will come back to you. We don't cheat our customers. We don't take any shortcuts. Still today, there's no microwaves in any of our stores. Yeah. We give you fresh product right from the fryer, right from the grill, right from the waffle machines, as you can see, standing right here. And you know, if, if you don't cheat nobody, they're gonna continue to come. They're gonna tell a friend and the line is gonna get longer and longer and longer and longer and God is good. Yeah. Okay, let's address, let's say we've got somebody that 
thinks this is what they want to do. They mm -hmm. want to start a business. What advice do you have for this person just getting going? You know, first of all, you need to find something that you truly love. Don't get into anything for the money. Because if you get into it for the money, it's just going to become a job. You know, and if you love it, I love food, I love to cook, I love to eat. So therefore, this does not feel like work. So everything comes so naturally. And the money and the, and, the, and the fame and the glory, it follows. So, you know, find something that you love and that you're truly passionate about. And the rest will take care of yourself. How about on the other side of the coin? What, what caution do you have for a new entrepreneur? Is there anything in your experience as you got this business off the ground that you said, if I could do it over again, maybe I would have done this differently. Maybe I could have avoided some of these challenges. Road number one, don't hire any family or friends. Man, don't do it. <laughs> don't hire any family or friends. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about what I do. And one of the hardest things is finding other people to share your passion. And family and friends, they, they might take things for granted and just feel um, entitled just because they're related. Uh, he's not going to get rid of me. I can, you know. So basically get people that you have no relationship with and that you can cut ties with the minute they do something wrong. Yeah. At the drop of a dime. Now, next question. The secret to getting talent, to get the right people hired and to be able to keep the right people. What advice do you have for an entrepreneur on that? Well, the interview process is real big. Um, you know, sometimes in the inter interview process, some people can come with a fake facade. And then once you get them in here, once they pass the interview phase, you get them in here, you keep your eye on them to see if they're the real deal. Uh, once after training, that would show a lot. And then once you put them on the line, the truth comes out, you know. Um, you know, sometime here, you know, when it slows down right after the lunch rush, we'll cut majority of the staff and we'll keep one or two guys on the line. And, you know, if they're faking the funk, it's going to come to the light. Yeah. So if they're doing good, we take good care of them. We make sure that they're happy and they stay here and the hours are there and they got a consistent job to take care of their family and raise their children. And if, you know, they're not doing a good job, you know, Everything comes to the light, we get rid of them. We cut ties with them real quick. Okay, sales, marketing, advertising. How were you able to take your brand and get it to the point now where you have people around the country that are familiar with Lolo's Chicken and Waffles? That's funny that you ask. Sales and marketing, in the beginning, when I was in the little house, I did it all myself. The reason I did it myself because I knew I would get it done. If I would have paid a guy to, hey, go put these flyers on cars or go advertise over here. They could have went to a trash can, tossed everything, sit down, smoke a cigarette, drink a beer, come back and say, pay me. So in the beginning, I used to go out myself and put flyers on churches, movie theaters, grocery stores, football games, sporting events, wherever I can find a large body of cars. I didn't do much advertising in trade magazines because I couldn't afford it at that time. I was just getting started. So putting a flyer on the car. I normally have a flyer in my pocket as I'm reaching. I don't have any flyers right now, but you can never find me in my vehicle without a flyer to get you over to my business. I love it. And uh, that's called sweat equity. You're not the same business you were back then. Things are different right now. It's a different things are time. different. How are, how, are you, uh, how are you handling those challenges today? Well, things are different. So, you know, um, a, a lot of marketing and advertising and word of mouth um, it's talked on social media. Um, now that we are a little bit um, more popular and can't afford to, we do some trade magazines such as the Phoenix Magazine, a lot of tourist magazines um, for spring training when ball clubs come to town, we'll advertise in their baseball magazines. Uh, we also do some um, advertising on Cox Cable. Um, we, we got a couple of commercials out. I mean, you know, we live in the right now world. So yeah. anybody can go to their smartphone and just hit a button, say Lolo's Chicken and Waffles, and all the advertisement that you can possibly think of will come right up. Yeah. You know, but I'm still old fashioned. With that being said, I still love people to come in and taste my food, and I love for them to be my advertiser. The food speaks for itself. And I know I found this place 
from word of mouth. And I've, I regularly, I mean, I'm, I'm a great commercial for you because I've told all my friends about it. Right on. And, and, and I know that that's got to be multiple, you know, over a thousand times across oh, yeah. the valley yeah. and the country because this, there is value in knowing a restaurant, a great restaurant that other people don't know about. Exactly. To be able to say, hey, have you eaten here yet? And it's, it's almost like uh, an emotional capital yes. with, with, a, with a friend. And then they want to tell you about a great restaurant. Exactly. And, and I thank you for that. Um, me and my wife, we talk all the time. We, we like, you know, I wish there was another restaurant that we can go to, like Lolo's, yeah. that we can enjoy. Yeah. You know? But, um, you know, it just goes back to saying that we give 110%. Yeah, you do. And it's hard to find people that gives 110%. Okay, you ready to talk about something that's, that's not as fun? Lawyers. So, a lot of entrepreneurs are concerned about the legal environment in our country today. And uh, it's it's good for them to have a real. Uh, r it's good for them to have a perspective that's honest and realistic mm -hmm. about the litigious environment that we live in. What's your strategy and philosophy when it comes to lawyers and uh, and making sure that you navigate through the the legal system? Well, re re um, for a business standpoint, we retain great representation. Um, we use a guy by the name of um, should I say his name, Brian Booker. Um, over at Quarles and Brady, and he takes real good care of us. Um, I've, I've been knowing Brian way before I even got into the restaurant business. Really? Yeah. And um, he's been doing a lot of good things around the valley, and he's been working hard for us. And to grow your business, to, to, to go into the franchise rim like we are, we have to cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's to make sure everything was right. Yeah. So we have to find a lawyer that we were comfortable with, who explained everything to us in layman's terms and make sure we were very well protected with going forward and growing our brand. Yeah. Are, do you consider yourself a competitive person? Very. My wife is too. That's one of our problems. We're always competing against each other. Yeah. That sucks sometimes. But but you can have fun with it too. We can have fun with it sometimes. Yeah. You know, back when we were just two stores, um, the Phoenix store would, would be considered my store and the Scottsdale store would be considered her store. We'll always compete who's doing the best sales, who's running the best ship. And, um, you know, we just got that competitive, um, that competitive drive in us. Um, speaking of drive, I also like to mention that a lot of stuff that I have instilled in me is drive. Um, I'm well driven, and I don't think any college or any university could have taught me what I have in me. I'm a go getter, I know how to go out and get it. And if it's not right there in front of me, I know how to go find it. And you bring so. up a great point, too. A lot of entrepreneurs have not gone to school. That's right. And um, I don't know that school can teach entrepreneurism, but if there was one class that you would recommend somebody study or read a book on in order to be a good entrepreneur, in order to be a successful business, business operator, what would it be? I guess the book of business. You know, I mean, if you're going to just read a book or study a course, I mean, School can teach you about business, but if you don't have that drive, if you don't have that, 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 that burn inside of you, you know, you can't put it to good use. And, you know, just like you told me earlier before we got started, gentleman talking about he came from nothing, he was ready to go back to nothing. Yeah. You know, I understand him completely yeah. because I came from nothing. Uh -huh. I mean, all of this started in an 800 square foot house. We was able to seat 20 people at a time and I never gave up, uh -huh. you know. And many people that would have went through half of the things that I went through to get to where I am today would have given up easily. Many people, um, some of my plumbers, some of my electricians, some people that actually did work for me in the beginning said, I don't know how you hung in there. You know, and here we are today. So, you know, you can, you can go to school, you can learn about business, but if you don't have that drive in you, it means nothing. What's your favorite book? 40 Laws of Power. By Green. Great. Yeah, it's a great book. What's your favorite movie? Oh man, where do I begin? I'm a movie head. Um, favorite movie? You know, I'm gonna go Inside Man, Denzel Washington. That's a great movie. You ever seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh man, you're missing out. Okay, I'll go see it. Okay, now let me let me challenge you here a little bit. You're gonna wake up tomorrow morning, and another person's body, homeless, on the streets. You've got nothing except the experience 
So you have no contacts, but you have all of your experience. What do you do to pull yourself up and get yourself back on top? Well, first thing I do, I clean myself up and um, get a job. You know, you come prepared to a, a, a place of business, present yourself well, well-groomed and clean. And, you know, you just ask for an opportunity to display your skills. It's all about starting at the bottom. And that's the problem with a lot of youth today. They live in this techie world where they want everything so fast and everything's at a touch of a fingertip. As far as your smartphone, your microwave, everybody expects to come in here and just because they're here, they expect to rise to the top overnight. I've been doing this going on 18 years and I'm still here wearing my shirt every day, dressed in my non-slips, prepared to work. If I gotta go in there and some guys are acting up and I gotta send 10 guys home, I'm prepared to get back here and start pushing out plates. Yeah. And that's the attitude that you have to have. Start from the bottom, and you'll work your way up to the top, and always be willing to go back to the bottom if you need to. Wow, that's great, that's great. That's tell, tell me what your business is gonna look like in 10 years. Well, we still rolling? Yep. Lolo's Chicken and Waffles, 10 years from now. I expect to be the next Applebee's. I want to be a fast, casual, family-style dining, your neighborhood restaurant in multiple states. Right now, we have the ball rolling. We're getting ready to expand into Omaha, Nebraska in September. We're going to be in Las Vegas in January 2016. And we just signed a lease on a building actually a week ago today in Dallas South Lake and we plan to have that store open by April 2016 this is a brand that's going places this is a brand that people have showed that they want us they want us around we're in the middle we're, we're looking at July 2015 it's 112 degrees and the dining room is packed we're doing killer numbers we are truly blessed, and if we just keep doing what we started doing in the beginning, the sky is the limit. We're on our way. Larry, we've known each other for a long time. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes and telling us a little bit more about your business. Thank you so much for considering Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you're interested in starting a business, go to the Arizona Corporation Commission website at azcc.gov. And best of luck in your entrepreneurial endeavors.